lecture 12 will discuss lecture 12 will discuss Fisher projections now Fisher projections are just another way of drawing um, organic molecules that typically have stereo centers Um, what's really nice about Fisher projection is if you have more than one stereo center, it allows you to see those stereo centers. Um, Fisher projections were started by Emil Fisher, and he was studying the stereochemistry of sugars. And some sugars contain as much as seven asymmetric carbon. And so this is a way, a perspective, to see the different stereocenters when you have asymmetric. So um, if you have a compound like this, so this is an alcohol. All right. So and if you view this here with your eye, okay, so if you view this here, then you would see that this hydrogen and this OH are coming at you, okay? And so you could, that would be like this. So this equals, it's a different way to view it, the OH coming at you and the hydrogen coming at you from this eye perspective and then what's going back is the CH2OH and the CH3 so then you would draw this going back CH2OH and this CH3 okay now this would be the equivalent of just going like this So that would be, uh, this is your Fisher projection right here. Okay, so you see how uh, when you have a Fisher projection, it's drawn flat, but what you can always assume is the horizontal, we call that the, the bow tie. You can see why it's called a bow tie. This is coming at you. And then the vertical, that's the horizontal, the vertical is going away. Okay, so that's behind the plane. Now, we want to be able to assign R or S. So what is this molecule name? Uh, let's see, we have our longest chain of carbon is one, two, three. So three carbons is what? Propane. Um, we're going to drop the E and you see our functional group is OH, and it's a diol on carbons one and two. So this is propane, propane diol. And then is this, um, where are stereocenters? Well, the first one, CH2 and CH3, those are not stereocenters. So you have one stereocenter. This is your stereocenter. And that's what you'll also see in the Fisher projections is that cross um, right there is a stereo center. So it makes it easy to count how many stereo centers you have. Okay, now we have to locate a stereo center. So we have one, and we have to decide what number is that. It's on two. So this here, is it an R or an S? And to sign that, you do your priorities. So you look at this. We have an oxygen, which would be one, and the hydrogen would be four, and then we have a carbon and a carbon. This carbon is bonded to an oxygen, this one to three hydrogens, so this is two, and this is three, and then we connect one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so then that is what? 
to the left counterclockwise so that's s right now you have to do you'll see that the horizontal is coming at you so your four priority is coming at you so you always have to do a switcheroo okay if you have your lowest priority which usually you will coming at you so s becomes r so this is 2r 1 2 propane diol um, let's see so when you're dealing with Fisher rules okay um, you always want your highest oxidized uh, carbon to be at the top so a lot of these are going to be like maybe an OH here and an OH there and these are sugars so they typically are aldehydes so if you were to convert this into a Fisher projection you have one two three four carbons your top one is CHO okay and then that's the highest oxidized carbon oxidized carbon is the carbon with the most oxygens okay so that's one and then here's two three and there's four so this is carbon number one two three and then the last one here is CH3 now if you were to convert this one of these is going to get a hydrogen we always keep the dashes and wedges on the same size you see how I drew and one gets an OH. Now I'm just going to put this in here. Okay. And I have no idea if I have the right R and S. Okay. So I'm just going to do this. And then we're going to see. So if we do this, let's look at our asymmetric carbon 2. So there's 2. Sign your priorities. 1, that's oxygen. Hydrogen is four. Now you got a carbon double bonded to O and a carbon bonded to one O. So this is two and that's three. One, two, three. That is what? That's left. So that's S. And because your hydrogen's in back, this is S. Okay, so let's see if we have S here. So same priorities, right? This is one. This is two. This is three, this is four. So one, two, three is what? That's S, okay? But because the hydrogen is horizontal, that's R. So I would have to take my eraser and I would have to redraw this if I wanted to have a matching Fisher projection with the OH here and the H here. So let's check that again. So one, two, three. One, two, three, that's R. And, and R gets switched because of the hydrogen horizontal. So that's S, so those match, okay? All right, and then we would check the other one. Okay, so we got CHO here, and then we check this one here. We have one, two, three. One, two, three. That is what? We're going right. That's R, and R says R because we've got the hydrogen in the back. Um, so is this R? One, two, three. That is S, and S would switch to R, this hydrogen. So this is an R, and that's an S, S and R. So this would be the correct Fisher projection for such a molecule like that. Okay, rotation of 180 in the plane doesn't change the molecule. Rotation of 90 is not allowed. Okay. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. You can look at your slides. 
um, 180 will put what's on top here on bottom so it would be CHO if I did this to 180 rotation CH3 here and then so what's on top goes on bottom and what's on bottom goes on top and then so and then what's on the left becomes right so there's your OH and H and what is on the right becomes on the left okay and so that would be the same molecule without changing the configuration um, you cannot put this CHO group 90 degrees um, okay so let's now work our Pogel exercises for the Fisher we're looking at um, activity 8 All right, so let's do, this is Pogel, page 87. Um, and so go ahead and start working model one. And I will start that as well. This is called the wedge dash. And the three lines means the same in organic chemistry. So now BRH And this is Fisher. Okay, so question number one. Circle the carbon parent chain in the wedge dash structure in model one. You circle that. I'm going to highlight it. Okay, so the circle the parent chain. So carbon, carbon, carbon. How many carbons is that? four carbons. So that's butane. And it says in the Fisher projection the carbon chain is what? It's a vertical, isn't it? Okay. So that's typical. Okay, compare the Fisher projection to the wedge dash structure in model one. How is the Fisher projection different from the dash wedge? Well, there's no dashes. There's no wedges. Just straight lines, right? What direction is implied for the vertical lines? Going back. Okay, so if you have the dashes on the vertical, that means it's going away from you. On the horizontal, the bow tie here, this is at you. Okay, it's coming towards you. And you can use your model kit. You can make this molecule. I suggest that you do that. Your models will be helpful for you when you're solving this chapter. Um, if I was doing this at home, I would try to make models. I'd rotate these to make that backbone where the chain is going away and I'd have my bromine and hydrogen flip towards me and um, so I would make that rotation like they're showing you in question four and I would try to make that model okay so it says make a model the staggered conformation rotate the C1 and the C2 bond 180 so that the carbon framework is eclipsed the u-shape conformation redraw the rotated structure in the wedge dash form. You also might want to use these models for the um, ACS, or not the ACS, but the sapling. All right, so 
I'm going to redraw this here. And this is one, two. So rotate the C1, C2 bond 180 degrees. So it wants an eclipse form. So if I drew this staggered, we're looking at Newman when we see eclipsed. Okay. And they want it down the C1 and the C2. There's the C1, there's the C2. Okay, so that is staggered. Now what's on C1? Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. What's on C2? Yeah, and we're looking here, okay? We're looking down this bottom. We have um, um, we have put this on the ring, um, the whole ring here. So we'll make this CHCl, CH2, CH3, and then you have hydrogen here, and you have chlorine here. Okay, so that would be a Newman projection that's staggered, and if we want to rotate it, um, so we have the eclipsed, So here we have, we'll keep the front the same, and then we'll rotate the back. And so we'll put chlorine here. We'll put um, CH, CL, CH2, CH3 there. And then this one has um, a hydrogen as well. And so if you were to do this down the C1 and C2, we would have the CH3 here it's on the wedge. You have hydrogen coming at you, chlorine coming at you, CH2, Cl, CH2, CH3. And so if we were in class, we would do that model. We'd rotate the molecules so you could see that. Um, I'm not going to do any more of those because we don't have the models on this. And we're going to go on to model two and model three and our Pogel. So let's go on to model two, absolute configuration. So absolute configuration is assigning R and S. And so that is our goal here. All right. So 5A, rank the groups in the above Fisher projection from highest priority to the lowest priority. So you can already find your asymmetric carbon, right? Because it's on the, the, um, the intersection. And so you're converting, you're, you're talking about bromine. Okay, that would be the highest, number one. And then you have this carbon is bonded to two carbons. It's number two. Then you have the CH3. That would be number three. And then your lowest priority would be hydrogen, which would be number four. So you do your priorities. And then the Fisher projection, what direction is the lowest priority group? So you see the hydrogen, and you see that it is on the wedge. So 5B is, is coming toward you, and that would be out. 
according to the rules, what direction does the lowest priority need to be? It needs to be going back. So for us, we'll do a switcheroo. So the next thing you want to do, which is um, 5, actually 5C, is you want to connect the 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, so when you do that, you're turning your turning wheel, right, to the right. So that's R. Okay, so that's clockwise. But because D, you want your lowest priority to be in the back, it has to be reversed. So it needs, so you would say no, it needs to be reversed. So R switches to S. So in 5E, determine the absolute configuration of the chirality center. The answer should be S. Okay, 6A says so swap the two horizontal groups. Okay, so let's swap. So we will do 6A here. We're going to swap these two horizontal groups. So the BR is over here and the hydrogen is there. And then it says determine the absolute configuration of the chirality center here. Okay, so what is this one? We have one, two, three, we're signing our priorities, four, we're going to connect one, two, three, we're turning the turning wheel, what, steering wheel, to the left. Okay, so that's S, but hydrogen it is on the wedge, which needs to be the lowest priority, needs to be in the back, so S gets switched to R. So what's the absolute configuration here? R. Okay. Okay, compare your answers. What conclusions can you make about swapping the two horizontal groups in the Fisher projection? Okay. They form, in this case, with one stereo center, they're enantiomers. One is an S configuration, while the other is R. That switches the stereo centers. Okay, now number seven. Draw the R isomer of two bromo. 1 butanol shown below using wedge dash structures. We'll do Fisher projections as well. All right, so the highest oxidized carbon needs to be at the top. That's CH2OH. We have one stereo center, okay? So we can just put the BR there. What you don't see is H, okay, and then here you would do CH2, CH3. You would do that as a condensed formula because you don't want it to be in an intersection here because it's not an asymmetric center, carbon. Okay, sign your priorities, one for bromine, four for hydrogen, and then this is a carbon bonded to an oxygen. That would be two because it's a carbon bonded to a carbon. That would be three. Now you connect your one, two, three. One, two, three. You're turning your turning wheel left. So that's an S. Okay, so you just made S. But we want it R. Okay, so what I would just do is I would just rewrite this on my paper and switch the bromine on this side, the hydrogen over here, CH2, CH3, and that is the R. And if it wants the dash wedges, you would just go there you go, and you can check if you want. Bromine's one. Hydrogen is four, 
Carbon oxygen is two. Carbon carbon is three. Connect your one, two, three. That is turning this turning wheel, steering wheel R, right? But your hydrogen is really coming at you, so you have to switch it to S. What did I do? This should have been S, which would have been R. So you see that this is actually R, so we actually did draw it right the first time, okay? Um, so R would put the bromine here. And that's what I have in my notes. So if you get a, a molecule like this and you have to draw a Fisher projection, I would expect you to be able to do that. And that's what that model is doing there. All right, now we are on model three. And these are called stereoisomers. A lot of times we have to talk about the relationship to one another. So um, question number, we got questions 8 through 11 left for this model. And um, you're going to see a lot of questions like number 10. And you can go through your textbook and your, um, and your slides, and that will cover some of these terms here. So we're just going to cover them here. And then I'll expect you to be able to apply them. Okay, so you have your stereoisomers there. You have, um, what is the definition? So a stereoisomer will have, I always do molecular formula, so they're going to have the same molecular formula that comes with the word isomer, okay? they don't have the same molecular formula, then they're always going to be um, different compounds. Okay, so if they have the same molecular formula, they're going to be some sort of isomer. And a stereoisomer not only has the same molecular formula, constitutional isomer will have different connectivity. And you saw this even with functional groups with like maybe carbonyls. Uh, maybe the carbonyls on the one and one compound. Maybe it's on carbon number two on another one. So they have different connectivity. But stereoisomers have the same molecular formula. They have the same connectivity. Um, but they cannot be interconverted. By rotation. Okay, so your hands, the left and right, are stereoisomers. Um, so you can have cis trans. These are stereoisomers. These are geometric. Okay, the, where you see cis and trans, right, this is rotation by single bonds. Okay, so where do you get cis and trans? You get these with. Um, this would be a trans alkene. And this would be a cis alkene. Okay? You can't get any rotation around this carbon carbon double bond. So you have a you have like a sidedness. You have a top side and a bottom side. And you see how you have your top priorities, which you'll learn in chapter seven how to name these. Fluorine are on the opposite side, which is trans. Here, fluorine is on the same side, which is cis. Okay, and these would be cis-trans stereoisomers. You also see stereoisomers, cis and trans, um, like these here. Um, so this, these would be stereoisomers. Um, So well, you can make him like that, okay? So this is cis and this is trans. Okay, so the connectivity is the same, molecular weight is the same, um, formula is the same, but 
one's a cis and one's a trans, and you would write that in the name when you're naming these, and you saw those, so you see this in ring structures. You have like a top and a bottom. Okay, well, B, you have chiral, and this is the handedness. So when you have asymmetric carbons, then you have, um, you can have a chiral object. And a chiral object, um, the mirror image is not the same. is not identical. Okay. So the three kind of chiral compounds you could have are enantiomers, diastereomers, and meso compounds. Now if you have an enantiomer, if you have one asymmetric carbon, this is the easiest way to look at this, one's R and the other's S. These are going to be enantiomers. The definition is that they're non superimposable mirror images. For a diastereomer, which also would be cis and trans, so anytime you have cis and trans, they are also considered diastereomers. Um, these are compounds with, what's the di mean? Okay, two or more chiral centers. Okay, and these are not mirror images. Okay, so these are mirror images. These are not mirror images. Okay, so if you have something like a diastereomer, and we're going to learn, if you have two stereocenters and one's R, R, what's its enantiomer? S, S. How is R, S related to these? So these two you're going to see are enantiomers, but these two are diastereomers, and these two are diastereomers. So you're going to have to learn the relationship with each other. Meso compounds, these basically are compounds with, um, they end up having two or more chiral centers, but they're achiral because they have a plane of symmetry. So if a compound has a plane of symmetry, that molecule is achiral, and how is it related? That would be a meso compound. These are your definitions, and we will be looking at how to look at molecules in this model and determine what, how they're related to one another. Okay, so let's answer our questions. 8A. A compound that has one chiral center with R configuration, what configuration would the enantiomer be? Did you circle S? Okay. 8B, a compound has one chiral center with the S configuration. What configuration would the enantiomer be? R. Okay, so that's enantiomer with one asymmetric carbon. 8C. A compound has two chiral centers, so we're looking at diastereomers, with configuration 1S, 2S. What configuration would the enantiomer be? 2R, 3R. Did you circle that? 8D. A compound has two chiral centers with the configuration 1S, 2S. What configuration would the diastereomers have? Okay, well, you could have 1R and 2S. You could have 1S and 2R. Okay, so there's two of those. Okay, let's go to 9. 
Okay, question nine. Draw the mirror image of the following Fisher projection. Okay, so what would the mirror image be? This is our mirror. CH3, CH2, CH3 at the bottom. Hydrogen, BR. See, there's your hydrogen, hydrogen. Here's your BR, BR. And then over here you have this BR away from you, and this hydrogen over here. Okay, so I made the mirror image. And then it says, determine, so we're looking at 9b, the absolute configuration of each chiral center in the original mirror image. Okay, so in the original, we've got to assign um, priorities. Bromine gets 1. We have hydrogen gets 4. And we're going to number these. Let's go ahead and number carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we're naming this. This is pro, not propane. What is it? Pentane, right? Pentane. And we have a um, 2, comma 3, dibromo, pentane. And then we're trying to decide 2 and 3. So we're trying to decide what these are. R or S. Okay. So going back to here, let's. Uh, we have one, four. Now we have this carbon bonded to bromine, or this carbon bonded to hydrogen. That's two, and that's three. Then we connect the one, two, three. So we're turning our steering wheel to the left, right? Correct. That's S, but hydrogen is on the horizontal, coming at you. So you have to switch a root. So in the original, this number two carbon would be R. Okay. Now let's do the next one. Okay, I'm just erasing that to clean it up to make it a little easier for you to see. All right, so now we have Bromine is 1, hydrogen is 4, we have carbon bromine, that's 2, versus carbon carbon, which is 3. We connect our 1, 2, 3, we're turning our turning wheel to the left, which is S, but hydrogen is on the horizontal, so the S gets switched to an R, so this is R. So this original is 2R, 3R. Okay, so now we want to see what this one is. All right. Once again, we are trying to figure out what these R and S configurations are. Um, let's do the one. You could probably already figure this out, but for learning purposes, I'm going to go through the process. One, two, three, that is four. That is what? R, and the hydrogen is on horizontal, so R becomes S. So carbon number two is S. Do the same thing here. Bromine's one, hydrogen's four. You're dealing with a carbon bromine, that's two. You're dealing with a carbon carbon. That's three. You connect the one, two, three. That's turning the turning wheel to the right, but your hydrogen is coming at you, so R switches to the S. All right, so we have determined the absolute configuration. Now for 9C. Based on your question, your answer, 9B, determine if the mirror image is an antimer or the same as the original. So we got 2R, S, 3, 2s, 3s. An antimer, that's right. So once your group has reached an agreement on the above questions, describe how using the absolute configuration helps to determine the types of stereoisomers. 
Okay, I put enantiomers have the opposite configuration at each chiral center. Diastamers have at least one opposite configuration, but not all are opposite. Okay? All right, now we're on question number 10. For question number 10, you have to decide if these are enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same compound. Okay, so the first one, A, you go ahead and work it. I'm going to draw all of these out while you work these. Okay, I'll do that. We'll just do one at a time. All right. So what I do is I look to see if they're the same molecular formula. CH3, CH3, CCL, CCL, CH3. And I see that they're connected. They have the same molecular formula. And they have the same connectivity. Sometimes I even name it. So we have one, two, three, four. So we're looking at two, three dichlorobutane, and we're trying to figure out what the um, RNS is for right here. Okay, and same thing here. And then I say, okay, you could just look at this and say, hmm, well, uh, you could look at this and, and say these are opposite. I like to name them because then you always get it right. So let's just see. CL would have one priority. Um, hydrogen would have four. And then you're looking at carbon bonded with hydrogen, carbon bonded with a chlorine. So that would be two, and that would be three. You connect the one, two, three, and you're turning the steering wheel to the left. Left is S, or counterclockwise. So this one here is two S. Okay, and then we go ahead and name the bottom one. Okay, so here we have a chlorine that would have higher priority. Hydrogen would have the lower. There's your four. This is a carbon Cl. So that's two. This is a carbon with three hydrogen. That's three. Connect your one, two, three. That is turning um, counterclockwise or left. So that's S. But then you have to switch your S. To R. Did I switch the top one? Uh, S should be switched to R. Do you see that? So one, two, three. That's left, but your hydrogen's coming at you. So that that one is. You gotta make sure this goes right. Two R, and then three. You're going left S, but then you have to switch it because hydrogen's coming at you. So that's three R. Okay, so if this one is 2R, this is opposite, this would be 2S. And if this one is 3R, this one would be 3S. You can see how they're opposite. So this one's 2S, 3S, and you can actually go through them. So how is this related to this? In antimers. All right, let's go on to B. All 
All right, so we need to kind of number these. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is pentane. We're going to drop the E, and we have one, two, two, three diol. And we need to figure out what the two is and the three is, okay? So this is carbon number two, and this is carbon number three. Now we want to see if this is the same compound. We see that if we number these one, two, three, four, five, we do have pentane. It's two, three, diol. And we're trying to look at the absolute configuration of carbons number two and three. So because the, I usually name them, that's how I know the connectivity is the same. And now we need to know if we're looking at um, either an antimers, diastamers, or the same compound. So at this point, I would start looking at what's the configuration of two. So we got oxygen is number one, hydrogen is number four. And we have a carbon oxygen is number two. This is just a carbon bonded to hydrogen is number three. I collect. I would connect my one, two, three. I would see that I'm turning the steering wheel to the left, which is S. But I have hydrogen coming at me, so that would change that to uh, R. So this one is a two R. And then I would come down here. I would sign oxygen is one. Hydrogen is four. This is a carbon oxygen, so that's two. And then this is three. Now we do the one, two, three. I'd be turning my turning wheel to the left, which is S. Hydrogen is on the wedge, so I have to switch it to R. So this is two R, three R. And then I would come over here and do the same thing. So this is my two. Uh, number two carbon. Oxygen is one. What's going back that we don't see? I would draw that in. This is where I tell you, make sure your wedges and your dashes are on the same side because this will determine whether you get the right configuration. You will mess up if, if you don't do that. Okay, so you got one. Hydrogen is four. Uh, this would be number two because it's a carbon oxygen. And then this would be three. So one, two, three. And that is going R. And R stays R because the hydrogen is in back. So this one's two R. Now we got to figure out what three is. Oxygen is one. Once again, I'm going to put in my hydrogen going back. That's four. And then this is three. Because it's got the carbon oxygen. And this is, I'm sorry, two. And that's three. So one, two, three, that's R. R stays R because the hydrogen's in back. So we got two R, three R. So we got two R, three R, two R, three R. This is the same compound. Okay, so that's the same compound. Let's do C. Okay, so one, two, three, four, butane, and we're looking at two, three, dibromobutane, and we're trying to figure out what two and three stereocenter is. Here we have one, two, three, four, so we have butane again. We have um, a two, three, dibromobutane. So we are looking to see. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll call this carbon number two. And 
carbon number two is what? There's your one. This is your four. This would be number two priority because it's carbon bromine. This one's a carbon hydrogen. Connect the one, two, three. Are you going left? Turn it left, which is S, but you got your hydrogen on the horizontal, so you got to switch that to R. So that's 2R. Do the same thing here. That's your 1. Hydrogen is 4. The chain is 2. The bottom is 3. 1, 2, 3. That's R, but your hydrogen is coming at you, so you got to switch that to an S. Okay, now, do you see how your top and your bottom, CH3, are the same? When I look at Fisher projections, and I always look there and say, oh, wow, they're the same. And do you see how you have a, a plane of symmetry? Okay, so this is a meso compound. So this one here is a meso compound. What that means is there are two or more chirality centers, but this molecule is achiral. Okay. Um, I would still go ahead and go through this and see and do this enantiomer here to see how they're related to each other. Um, so BR is 1, okay, and you can see this has a plane of symmetry as well, okay. Um, so 1, 4, 2, 3. And that is S, um, which is R. And then that other one, so we got one of these is, you call that 2R. And then here, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. And that is S, 3S, okay? So, um, these are meso compounds, okay, and so that would be the same. All right, now let's do D. CO2, that's a carboxylic acid at the top, that's your highest oxidized carbon. We have an OH. And OH and OH. How many stereocenters do we have here? Can you see that you have three? You see how these are opposite here? Now, now I'm going to let you, I will do one of these and I'll let you do the other one. Um, but I will go ahead and sign these priorities. Um, that's not a one. Okay. So you're looking at oxygen, which is one, hydrogen, which is four. Okay, now you have carbon, oxygen, and this one has, what is that? Sometimes you need to write this out, the Lewis structure. Okay, so this is a carboxylic acid. So this is a carbon bonded to three oxygens. Okay, that's going to be a higher priority than a carbon bonded to one oxygen. So when you connect the one, two, three, that is R, but the hydrogen's coming at you, so R will switch to S. So this one's an S. If you come down here, this is here, so you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, which is R, then the hydrogen's coming at you, so that's an S, so that's an S there, okay? So you see how the molecule is flipped, and you can see that if you do rotate this 180 degrees, the OH, so what's on top, goes to the bottom, 
what was on bottom, CH3, goes to the top. And then what was on the left is now on the right. Okay, so here you have, in the middle, you have OH here. It's on the right. And here it's still on the right. Okay, so let's sign this one. This is 1. Hydrogen's 4. We got a CO. We got a CO. We got a CH3. And then we got a C. So this is 2. And this is 3. 1, 2, 3. So that would be S. But the hydrogen's coming at you. So S would go to R. So this one's R. Okay. So we'll call that 2S. 3R, this is still, it's still 2S because you got to count it from the highest oxidized 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. What is this one? 1, should be this, it might not be the same, it, should, it might be, it should actually be the same because you'll see that's 2, 4, so 1, 2, 3 is going to the right, which is R, but then you have your hydrogen coming at you, so that's going to switch to S. So that is 3S. Yeah, that's correct. That's because of the thing here. All right, and then you have this last one here, which is the 4. Carbon number 4. Go ahead and do the 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. That is turning the steering wheel to the left, which is S, but your hydrogen is coming at you. So that's R. So that should be 4R. Okay. And then you come up here to 4. You have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. So that is what? Turning your turning steering wheel to the left. So that's S, but then the hydrogen is coming at you. So that's R. So this is 4R. Okay, so we have R's the same, we have S the same, but this is an R and this is an S. So these are what? Diastereomers. What would be the enantiomer of this? It would have to be 2S, 2R, no, what would it have to be? It would have to be opposite of S, which would be 2R. The opposite of R, which would be 2, 3S. The opposite of R, which would be 4S. Those would be enantiomers. Okay. So these are diastereomers. Um, all right. So when I look at your problems or your additional questions that you have to turn in, um, I see that 12A, you will want to... I say convert to that Newman projection, convert it to a Fisher projection, okay? So convert that to a Fisher projection from the Newman. Um, and then you do have some rings. Those are kind of challenging. C is very similar. You might want to do some molecules. D is usually challenging. I'll tell you the answer for D is the same. Okay, so see if you can get the same on that. Um, so you can work through those problems. And then 13, you just have to find the absolute configuration. I do want you to show your work so I can see the priorities. Um, and then 14, uh, you need to convert that xylitol sugar into the Fisher projection. Okay, so I do want to see the converted Fisher projection in that. Okay, and then you have to decide whether it's a chiral compound or not. So see if you have a plane of symmetry for that. All right, and that is Fisher projections.